Welcome to the new episode of this segment, Empower Your Life, where the aim is all about bringing positivity, motivation, aspiration, and encouragement towards your goals or dreams that you have wanted to pursue for a very long time. The next guest, she is a graphic artist or illustrator based in Sofia, Bulgaria, once dreamt about living a zero waste life. Waste is one of many major environmental issues that we're facing right now and it's a super serious discussion to have but our next guest she came up with a very bright idea of bringing waste awareness into more fun and positive ways to learn zero waste philosophy and hoping to inspire everyone to start taking a part even with the smallest action so that's by creating a comic strip with a group of animal characters who are trying to have a more sustainable living, which inspired by her own struggles, zero waste living. And that is why I call this episode, Fun Tips for Sustainable Living with Aware Animals. Let's all welcome the person behind Aware Animals, Mira Petrova. Hi, Mira. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Thank you so much for inviting me to share, to share this story and for doing this amazing project and for, for letting me be a part of it. Thank you so much. And um, we are on this together. So thank you as well for taking part. Um, so how are you and how is Bulgaria overall? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm mostly um, like today is a very... Uh, gray sort of day it's a little bit rainy yeah. outside but we had i think five beautiful sunny days in a row and it felt like the summer has come and it was um, it was wonderful and we also had holidays yeah. uh, during this time so we could all go to like nature or the park and enjoy it which we all know in these times has been a, a rare occasion and every every chance we get to be in the sun and in nature is is wonderful so yeah I'm very grateful for that <laughs> I agree with you on this because uh it feels like it's a it's a blessing already like we have a consistent or consecutive days of sunny days because mm -hmm. right now in uh, Valencia mm -hmm. supposedly it's summer already but we still experiencing rain <laughs> the weather is 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 crazy and uh, yeah we know why <laughs> Same here. Uh, <laughs> you, yeah, I, you should get your sandals or your umbrella and what's happening. So yeah, it's okay. better to always have your jacket with you or better also wear like flow shoes just mm -hmm. to be safe. <laughs> yeah, totally. So that's great to hear that um, our weather slowly, sh I mean, the sun is showing up and you're feeling better. So let's talk about aware animals. So can you share a little bit story of how everything started? You know, what made you to, to create this, this comic strip and what's the, the idea, inspiration and so on. So mm -hmm. share us. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and thank you for the lovely introduction you did. I almost don't know what to add, but I'll, I'll try. I'll do my best. <laughs> um, as you mentioned, I'm an, I'm an artist by education. This is what I studied for for many years. I've studied two different types of, of art um, education. I've studied toy design and set design and costume design and puppets mm -hmm. and all sorts of different things. And then I slowly shifted towards graphic design and started mm -hmm. working with different brands, um, mostly to do their packaging, packaging design. Mm -hmm. um, you know different solutions for their products and how they should be presented and how their brand should be presented and the more I was working in that field the more I sort of became sad at how much waste we create like I both loved what I was doing and loved the brands that I was working with but then at the same time since I've always been like in love with nature and um, really curious about everything that's happening with the environment and obviously climate change and all, all those things, um, it just felt that I'm sort of adding to the, to the problem <laughs> instead of helping to solve it. Yeah. And it was starting to weigh on me a little bit. And I felt like that for, for quite a, like maybe a year. Um, it was just something that was constantly on my mind and I spoke yeah. with my partner and he was like, yeah, but like you have so much resources, you can grow, you can 
you can research things and so on. Maybe Very talented. Thank you. <laughs> it's just something that I love doing. And yeah, it's just a really big part of my life. And obviously with art, it's always a matter of opinion and it's always a matter of like people have different styles and different approaches to things, which is lovely because then for, for each thing created, there is an audience and for mm -hmm. every audience, there is something created. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, and it was just this sort of suggestion that like maybe I could do something but you know what would that something be <laughs> and the main issue um, that I found was that like for a couple of years before I started the project I would want to share information about climate change about you know the things that are happening about how to live a more sustainable life and most of the things that I would find online they would be a little bit more on the depressing side yeah <laughs> and you know images of animals dying and forests being like burned to the ground and so on which we all know is happening yes and when you share something like that people don't usually reshare it because it has already sort of right. brought their mood down a little bit yeah. and they, they don't want to do that to their friends as well yeah and i felt that this crucial information sort of doesn't become as popular as i felt it would be mm -hmm. possible to be as other things and i thought to myself well maybe if we if we manage to present it in a more optimistic way in a more practical way in a more funny way so mm -hmm. that you know people look at something and they're like oh i never knew that but oh, mm -hmm. a funny situation happened between those characters and so on maybe yeah. it would be something that not only with will stay with them for a little bit longer but also they would have this impulse to share it with their friends with their family and yeah, that's how that's how the idea came about the, the comic strip. Like what you said, because you use the, the, the comic strip, you know, the fun animal characters, and you don't use human, <laughs> some yeah. sort of us, that kind of making us a direct guilt that, hey, you're doing this. But since you use in a creative and a fun ways, it's very catchy. It's easier kind of reshare to friends because you use in a different way, even though the message itself, it's already, you know, you have to do this. Mm. But I think we are, for me, I'm the same. I'm very visual. Whatever I see, that's the first impression I'm getting. And uh, the message is the second, since I saw that, that, yeah. And of course, it's not, it's not something that easy to make. So that's why I'm like, so in love when I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> thank so you so great. much and yes. actually, on the point of them being animals i can also share like why as you're saying there are many reasons why they're animals but the first one was i actually saw a few videos that became viral online about animals that are actually collecting waste and throwing it away yes like an elephant and um, i think a raven like different sorts of birds and you know how intelligent yes. they actually are so when they see something out of order they're they sort of want to help with that and also this feeling that in nature nothing really goes to waste it's created in this beautiful way so that you know whatever is left over from one process can feed the next one and so on and so on and then mm -hmm. like we're sort of the first being that created this problem in a way and now it's it's part of our journey to figure out how to how to fix things and maybe like move them, steer them in a different direction. I also love them being animals because first of all, they're cute. We all yes. like animals are cute. Um, but also you don't have this issue of, you know, for example, race as much. People don't see themselves. So it's like you can, you can very easily see yourself as a fox or a bear or a, <laughs> no, no matter what animal. And you don't have to wonder, oh, is this like, is this about me? Yeah, it's about all of us. We're all in it together, no matter where we live, no matter what the situation is. So, yeah, yeah. I like that you point out the race. It's actually a very serious um, kind of point or part, mm -hmm. whenever you're you're making a, a campaign or anything. It's black and white and so on and so forth. So yeah. it's great to know that you actually kind of consider that as well, apart the animals. One of the things that I'm sure that you have a lot of projects right now going, I assume. <laughs> and uh, recently, not recently, actually it's been months that you have um, launched this, uh, your first, right? Calendar 2021, Aware Animals, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, you shared about this uh, 
the challenges that you're facing. And uh, so share with us, so like maybe just one of the challenges that you're facing and then what have you learned with that, that you're going to make sure that for the upcoming projects that you're going to have, this is one of the things that you want to make sure it's not going to happen again. <clears throat> well, yeah, we, it was interesting because the calendar for this year was our first physical item, physical object that we created before that it was all online. Like it's a way to consume something, but then obviously it's very different when you can have a physical object to touch yeah. and we wanted to just do something. Obviously it was a dark part of the year with the pandemic and everything, but the holidays were coming and we just wanted to do something fun to yeah. boost like <laughs> people's mm -hmm. mobility and so on. Uh, so we decided to uh, to do both a physical um, issue of the calendar and also um, a sort of downloadable file so that, for example, if people are somewhere else in the world, but not Bulgaria, which is where we're located, they wouldn't have to wait such a long time for shipping. We wouldn't have this you know carbon carbon footprint of the transportation which is something yes. that always bothers me and it's it's a tricky concept when you're trying to sort of convince people to buy less <laughs> and yes. in general consume less to then at the same time try to create some sort of merchandise for the people that that enjoy the, the concept and the idea so we really wanted to provide people with options and in the end we came up with this too you have the physical copy that you can buy only here locally and then you have the downloadable um, option that you can just buy online and get anywhere you are and just print on the paper you you wish the size you wish and mm -hmm. share with your family and friends or just have it in your own home and it was a very interesting project what we discovered was that at least for now at least in our <laughs> fan base let's call them i don't know uh, <laughs> followers um, people were mostly leaning towards the physical, um, yeah. physical option, and, and they truly, truly enjoyed that, which was great. And we were super grateful. And I could sort of feel why, because I'm the same with, for example, illustrated books and things that I, things that I, I, I love. Uh, I, I really like to have them in my home yeah. so that I can go back to them and sort of touch a collection. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just something that you have and with a calendar obviously like after the year is gone it's it's um it's not active anymore but you can still keep the images have yes. these little pictures or posters around the house so yeah it was a very uh, fun and interesting experience and something that we could learn from for the next year to figure out how to do this so we still are working on that <laughs> to both have um physical items but then hopefully have them in a way that the carbon footprint is not too bad. <laughs> yeah, but you mentioned about this, uh, like partnering with the uh, printing services. I think that's a very good idea because, I mean, I personally not sure because I never done this, mm. but I think you came up with that idea that partnering with the printing services within, I think, European. Mm -hmm. you, know? you actually also gave them the opportunity of maybe not a lot of. Uh, of, of income, but some sort of business that also they're sure they're sort of um, participating mm. in in this campaign that you're promoting, and that's a, I think that's a very good uh, approach because most of the time right now, even here everywhere, you want to get all the products across the globe, so it's all about the transportation. Mm. Yeah. That will be a very nice and still the quality of the, the calendar 2021 will be still almost the same as exactly what you should have from your collection in mm. Bulgaria side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what you're mentioning is also a very interesting sort of experiment that we're trying on to work with, with a company that does this print on demand thing mm -hmm. so that you don't create all this products that you don't know if there's going to be a market for after yes. that or if they're just going to pollute the earth when so many other things do and so now we're working we're partnering with this company so that whenever somebody for example wants to buy something that has our characters uh on it they can just order it and it gets printed specifically for them and shipped straight to straight to their home and uh, this company has 
printing facilities in different continents, which I really loved. So, for example, if you're ordering it from the States, it's going to be made and shipped from the States. But if you're yes. ordering it here in Europe or in Asia, like accordingly, it's going to happen there, which I, I really love because it sort of fits with our concept. Yes. <laughs> I love that. That's why I thought that's a great idea. And um, I think it's moving forward into a better uh, project on words, right? So I know that you have also this uh, little book about recycling um, that I think now you have in Italian language, mm -hmm. right? So share us a little bit about little book about recycling. <laughs> With pleasure. Yeah, so this uh, this came as just a, a silly little idea because around the holidays we did this sort of giveaway thing on our social profiles and we asked we asked the audience what would you love to change in your life in the in the next year in order for it to be more sustainable and more mm. environmentally friendly. And we were thinking the answers are gonna be, you know, maybe going towards composting or I don't know, some, some more specific things, but surprisingly for me, the biggest percentage of people said they would love to start recycling. And I was a little bit surprised because I thought it's something that has been, like there has been a lot of information about it around. We've been talking about it for yes. a long time. Uh, but especially here in Bulgaria, I think for, for at the beginning, there was a little bit of superstition coming from the people that it's not really working. People aren't really recycling the items. It was very strange. There was this little negative energy towards recycling. That there is isn't <laughs> point in it. And also many people, I felt even around me, like my closest um, friends and family, when we would speak, they wouldn't know what can be recyclable or not. So people, so people would come to me all the time with questions or like little pieces of packaging and oh be like, God. can I recycle this? What container do I put this in? And I would answer these questions over and over again. And many, many of them I didn't even know the answer to. So I would call other people or like research online and speak yeah. with like actual professionals to figure out, can you actually recycle this material? How many times can you recycle it? And so on. And uh, so when we received this feedback that for so many people, it was still uh, a new territory. I was like, okay, maybe we can do like a little guidebook, like very unfrightening, <laughs> a little funny, colorful thing that just sort of step by step explains um, different aspects of recycling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we mostly focused on the materials themselves because mm -hmm. the separation and the collection and separation process can be very, very different between countries. For example, it would be like one thing in, in Italy and another yes. here in Bulgaria and another in the States and so on. But the materials, they're pretty much the same and they get shipped around all over the globe. And it's like amazing how much it varies the process and the final results of what you get when you recycle one material and then the other. Yeah, so we focused on that. We made this this book. It was a very interesting and fun experience for me because it was our first like actual book. Before that, it had always been like just a little comic strip or something. Um, and I thought ah, it's going to be done for like a couple of weeks. And in the end, I think I was working on it for for months with all the little <laughs> details and stuff. And we we had the pleasure to to sort of invite people to the team actual scientists here in Bulgaria who work with microplastics and nice. stuff like that to be absolutely certain all the information on it is proper all the sources that we used have been like properly read and we're yeah. sure that <laughs> we're not going to mislead anybody in any direction yeah. um, which was very important to me because we know how it can get online you read something yeah. you're like oh that must be true and then it turns out it's not true at all <laughs> Yes, and it is it is now available. It is free, which I am very, very happy about because we managed to sort of earn a sponsorship by the uh, the Bulgarian Culture Fund here in, in Bulgaria, which is wonderful. So it's available online. It means that everyone the same thing can can uh, print it out on for themselves mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you can either have it as a PDF on your phone or on your computer or whatever you use uh, things and just look through it whenever you need to check something. Or some people have been printing it out, sharing it with their family or, for example, the pupils in their kindergarten. Um, <laughs> it sounds lovely and people send me pictures and I'm just, my heart is melting. I'm so happy <laughs> when that happens. And it's now available in English and Bulgarian, which are the, the two main languages we, we work in, but also in Italian, as you mentioned because this wonderful school here in Bulgaria, it's um, an Italian orientated high school. And they contacted me and they said, we, we love this book. We think the content is very interesting and we're a group that's focusing more on environmental issues. And we would love as part of our education process to translate it into Italian. Would you be okay with that? And I said, of course, that's amazing. This is like so many wonderful things happening at once because like they're learning more things, they're experiencing this translation process and, and creating something that can actually be used by Italian speakers after that, which mm -hmm. is the best part. And thanks to them, the book is now available in Italian as well. And people are actually reading it in Italy, which is wonderful. Nice, that's nice. Yeah, and inspired by the, their example, we, we shared this on, on Instagram and on Facebook and said, if you have like pupils in a similar way or... Um, like if, if you think you would be interested in this process contact us and maybe we can do this in other languages as well and a lot of people did which <laughs> again I was so surprised and so happy by and I don't want to like give in too much um, but like we already have a Portuguese translation that's almost done and a Greek one and like we're waiting for another 10 so maybe soon the book will be in like 14, 50 languages. That's nice. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I am seeing that it can be part of, uh, you know, educational books, you know, because I think, again, I think for most of the people, even adults, having drawing as a guideline, it's still easier to, to you know, to follow than just having like the text, <laughs> you know, which <laughs> you can agree, right? I think we all have this thing from when we were kids. When I was a kid, I would look at a book and I would go like this to see if there is any pictures. And if there weren't pictures, I would be like, nah. <laughs> and it's just such an easier way to comprehend information. Yes. Really get to your brain faster and maybe in a better way. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm so happy for you that you have like how many now coming and I'm super excited to see that. And I'm, I mean, you deserve it because your idea is brilliant. So, and it will be very useful for, from kids all to adults like us. <laughs> so speaking of this passion of yours that you love to do, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure by having our audience listening or watching, um, they are very inspired how talented and how passionate you are with what you're doing, which is very, very big, big um, idea. And it's, it's uh, something purpose with a big purpose in our lives. Mm -hmm. So as a person who pursue and still pursuing to continue mm -hmm. with what you are doing right now, for other people who wanted to start uh, to to you know pursue their passion in life but they just don't know how you know what tips or advice can you share with us so they can slowly put action on it mm -hmm. that's a very good question <laughs> and a very tricky one I can say for me what has worked and then that not necessarily will work for for everybody but um, I think one of the words you mentioned, passion, is very important. You need to find something that speaks to you, that, that is something that you think about anyway every day of your life. You know, it's not just something that you randomly see and you're like, ah, you know, maybe I'll do this or maybe I'll do that, but something that is like an essential part of your, of your life and an interest that, what, like, what do you... What do you do in your spare time, kind of? Yeah. Because in my spare time, I always go online. I look for new articles, for new approaches, for new inventions, for new things on how we can make this better. 
you know, mm -hmm. how we can fix problems that we have created and so on. And it's just something that my mind is constantly busy with. And mm -hmm. even if I like, instead of trying to make it not be busy with it and try to do other work, <laughs> which was taking so much of my time, now I just gave in and I'm like, okay, this is what interests me. This is what I'm passionate about. I'm just going to go for it and yeah. spend as much time as I can, you know, focused and working on this. And it's important because you need to do a lot of it in order for it to get better. And I think it's like that with everything. When we start a new project, a new ambition, a new direction, we don't know what we're doing. I for sure had no idea. I didn't even know this profession existed to, to create comic strips. It was totally new for me. I found out about it, like, I think four years ago. And I was like, people can do that for a living? This is amazing. <laughs> and then I... I sort of got inspired by it, but it was so, so far away from me. I had no information whatsoever. And then you just slowly start doing it and learning about it in the process. And I still don't know so much about how social media works or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how to do one thing or another, but I read online, I contact friends, I ask people, which I think also is very, very important, reach out to people. Mm -hmm. It's something that I used to be very afraid to do before. I would feel very ashamed and sort of insecure and worried that I'm going to take up so much of their time and never reach out. But now I started doing it more. And what I find out is that if people don't have the time for you, they're just going to say it most of the time, which is totally okay. You have to be prepared for that and you have to sort of approach them with that in mind that obviously it's not, it's not their job to to spend time answering okay. to you or anything. But so very often when you approach people, they're very excited about the, the same way you are. Um, mm -hmm. And to be able to share something that they've learned and pass it on and so on. And it's a wonderful way to both create communities and just learn in a way that's practical and comes from experience instead mm -hmm. of, you know, just a book or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, reaching out, doing something that you're passionate about and then doing a lot of it so that it can improve over time because obviously none of us were perfect the first time we did a video or a drawing or wrote a text or whatever it takes practice it takes time and it takes a lot of times for you to do it not so well <laughs> so that you can find out your mistakes and figure out what you can do better and because of that I think the last thing I'll say is discipline which is Totally new concept to me. I used to be a very chaotic sort of person before. And lately, I just love having a schedule, having a deadline. I put deadlines for myself because if I don't do it, things just don't happen because I always yeah. think, oh, it can be a little bit better. It can, I can draw it a little no, bit. Yes. I can write yes. it a little better. Yeah. Um, so you never release anything. But if you have a deadline and if you're very strict about it, First of all, it means, you know, you're going to do it, you're going to share it, and it means you're going to do more of it, and that way you're going to learn more. And instead of okay. spending three months on a picture, you're going to have 30 pictures, right? Yeah. Which in the end, is very, very different. That's so, fine. yeah. <laughs> wow, well, thank you. I think I totally agree with all the, the, the things that you've mentioned. Importantly, is that discipline and consistency. Yeah, you got to do that or else <laughs> I've learned with this that, I mean, if you believe with your ideas and you have faith and you're consistent with it, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. I mean, it's your call. So there you go. And uh, yeah. yeah, nothing is perfect. <laughs> so if we're, not gonna, if we're just going to wait until it gets, I actually, I don't think we can even say, oh, it's perfect. Okay, let's release it. <laughs> right? It's never perfect. It's never, yeah. there's always going to be one mistake or one line or something that you don't like, but at the end, that's part of its charm. This is what I'm, I'm, t I'm learning <laughs> and I'm oh, saying nice. to myself. Uh, we're heading to the uh, final 
uh, question that I love so much <laughs> is that I know that each one of us, uh, we're facing a lot of challenges in life. You have a lot of challenges or stress, frustration, especially you have a lot of things on your plate right now. But how uh, do you keep yourself optimistic to keep moving forward? Mm. <laughs> Another excellent question. <laughs> Um, like it's not up to us what happens in our life and what the situations are obviously there's always going to be something happening that's not in our control and in our power to change or fix but I truly believe it's up to us how we like how we approach this and what attitude we have towards it and yeah. obviously there are diff many different situations but in general you can find an opportunity or a lesson in pretty much any situation it's something that I think my, my parents taught me very well over time. If you have a problem, it doesn't necessarily have to be a problem. It can be a lesson. You know, mm -hmm. whenever you end up in a tricky situation that's a little bit maybe more negative than you want, I always think, hmm, maybe there's a lesson here that I still haven't learned. And, and that's why this situation presents itself so that, you know, I can take advantage of it. Yeah, so the general attitude really helps, which I try to have, I don't always succeed. And I think that's okay to always admit that we all have bad days. We all have days that we just don't want to do anything, <laughs> especially lately. Um, and it's good to normalize that and not pretend that every day needs to be perfect or every situation. But then another thing that um, for myself has really, really completely changed my life and, and made me way more um, active, energetic and optimistic was starting to do more sports and be more active mm -hmm. in that area of my life. Before I was very inconsistent, I would do a little bit of this, a little bit of that here and there. And then at some point, I, I just decided I want to become a more disciplined person and I want to have a, like a strict routine to mm -hmm. keep. And I started doing that. I think it was maybe four years ago now. Oh. Yeah, and I would good. pretty much train every day. And it was very interesting how it changed, like obviously changes your body and you become more healthy, which is wonderful. Yeah, your brain, your <laughs> yeah. brain functions differently. And that was such an amazing, uh, like sort of uh, revelation to me how much my brain chemistry changed and how I, I would approach situations differently. And we all know this feeling when you've had a really good like run or yeah the, or, the, the adrenaline rush and you know and the the the, the yeah, and just the endorphins in your brain and you feel like you can conquer the world <laughs> <laughs> and when you give this to yourself every day it sort of slowly builds up and I think it also really helps your confidence at least in my case it really did because before I would doubt myself I still do sometimes but I would doubt myself a lot Mm -hmm. uh, constant basis I would be like oh can I do this like it's so much am I strong enough to do this but after you've done a pretty hardcore workout with like a lot of push-ups and burpees mm -hmm. or whatever you know you're strong you know you've proven <laughs> to yourself <laughs> by <laughs> end of your exercise is like yeah. yeah exactly so you're just like okay I can handle this situation I can do this so that's an advice that I think I would yeah, I would definitely give to, to everybody because it's really, really helped me <laughs> in my That's life. Good. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you that having a strict routine or starting with something. Uh, I've learned this, that uh, when you exercise in the first thing in the morning, that actually awakens your veins and even your brain. That is why a lot of people, successful people, those people who already reach wherever they are, they started from exercising and their brains just function very differently. And therefore there's so much ideas coming out. And I think that's why exercise is really powerful uh, part of your daily routine. And obviously like what you said, nothing is perfect. And also keeping everything um, uh, consistent. And, uh, and there are a lot of things that you can't control, but you just have to move forward. And I like the, the, the lesson that your, your parents taught you or mm. something that, you know, maybe it's a lesson. They're so wise. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Definitely, they are very wise people. <laughs> yeah, 
that. That's nice. Thank you for sharing of how how do you keep yourself optimistic. before I let you go I want to make sure that everyone can reach out to your very inspiring comic strip of mm. Ultra Animal so tell us or share with our audience uh, where where can we find you um, well people can find us if they want to of course on social media on both Instagram or Facebook and also Twitter but we're not as active there so Facebook and Instagram are the best and then for people who don't use social media as much we also have a, an actual website mm -hmm. uh, awareanimals.com where they can find us and we post um, weekly the same things as we do on social media there and then we also have a patreon page um, which i don't know if uh, if you're familiar what that is but patreon is this wonderful platform where people can support um content creators yeah if, if people want to support us in a small way also financially so that we can keep doing what we're doing because as we were talking about it's not always easy uh they can also do that and find us there <laughs> the website again patron uh it's uh yeah www.patreon.com and then slash aware animals or if they just put us in the search engine our name aware animals it's gonna pop up <laughs> so yeah, perfect i i haven't i never heard that but i'm gonna check that out and it, it's of a course it's a it's always great to support uh, people who are sharing a lot of uh, effort of making a different more pur purposeful uh, <laughs> activities in life so there you go we have covered everything it was really fun of getting to know the idea how this aware animal started and how much more uh, projects and maybe a little bit stories here and there. And I'm looking forward to, to actually get a copy once I visited, or maybe I print out the little book about recycling. And looking forward for 2022 calendar. <laughs> so there you go. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, I really wish you a good luck and hopeful for more collaborations with a lot of people who are also doing the same campaign or goal for you know helping our environment to become better than we found. Thank you so much for the invite and for this awesome talk. It was so, so wonderful to spend this time with you. And what you're doing is truly amazing, sharing people's stories in this way so that we can learn from each other and sort of have this database of, you know, how, how, to, how to do things, um, yeah, you know, in a different way and figure out different approaches to, to life and, and our you. passions. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It's really inspiring. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Bye.